Hello, everyone. Welcome to Soul Chat Live. We have Isabella Green here today, and we're going to be speaking about energetic boundaries and how you can create them with grace and kindness. So Isabella Green is a metaphysical specialist, spiritual healer, and mentor who, after her awakening in 2010, decided to leave her job in the financial services industry and pursue a metaphysical career. And as her um, abilities developed, she has um, advanced to where she's not experiencing uh, a lot of the things that we're talking about anymore. And so let's welcome Isabella Green. Isabella, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Hi, guys. It's a pleasure. Yeah, I'm just, I'm so pumped for today. So before we get into um, like your awakening and then how you create energetic boundaries, can you tell us a little bit about your time in the New York underground music scene? Well, I've always been very attracted to music, to the music scene since, a teen, since I was a teenager. And so I went to pursue uh, being a part of it since I remember myself um, teenage years and then I moved to New York City and New York City had so much to offer in that arena so I just worked my way into that scene and I was pretty much a rock star by night and a um, proper professional by day I don't know if I was very proper but I definitely <laughs> tried because that was something that was taking care of me financially but my heart was definitely within the underground music scene and it was back in the late 90s and early 2000s and so that was um, still really ripe and real <laughs> and I enjoyed every aspect of that not very healthy environment, I would say, but <laughs> definitely, definitely a lot of fun. Yeah, I think that's one of those things where it's like better ha to have tried it than like to sit back and wonder, like, oh, I wonder what that would have been like. And I always, I agree completely because I know that um, it's always better if you have an idea or a dream or that you want something, it's better to get it out of the way before jumping into let's say where I am at right now because otherwise you get derailed if that dream shows up as a carrot or a possibility of getting that then people just drop the whole spiritual ball and uh, jump right back uh, go after that dream so I always say go through as much uh, as you can before and then you can arrive at a place where you can be at peace and ready to fully embrace um what comes with the spiritual path yeah and let's talk about your spiritual path i'm really curious like kind of leading this double life it sounds like how did you go from um the financial services industry into i'm going to be a coach um i had a i had a really i had a really uh wonderful situation because i think by that time i was already my soul was already um directing me towards where I'm at right now and so I actually got laid off with one year severance package where everything was paid and on the day when I for a whole year like as if I still had a job but the my but I didn't have to go to work anymore um, and throughout that year I started questioning things and I had a very strong feeling um as i exited that building on times square with a box and everything like many other people at that that year um i had a very strong feeling i was not born to do this you know i uh, but what i was born to do i had no idea <laughs> and so i started asking the question it took me a whole year almost the, the entire year went by and i still did not know and then um in the meantime, I started meditating and I started learning about things and things started coming into my awareness. And um, I was coming back from a yoga class, I started taking yoga and because I started to calm down a little bit there at that point and uh, from the craziness of the New York life, um, 
I was coming back from the yoga class and I had this very strong feeling to stop by this bar and I wasn't even drinking at that point anymore. And I was thinking, why would I want to go to the bar? But the feeling was so strong and it was a lunar eclipse. And I said, okay, fine. I'll just stop by the bar. I stopped by that bar, sat down there. There was only one person in that bar. And I asked for tea and they didn't have tea and they gave me water and the guy was having water as well. And all of a sudden he looked up and he said, what do you do? And I started going into the whole like, yeah, you know, I work for, for this company. And he said, no, uh, what do you do for people? And I thought about it. It was like, I don't know. I've always been told that I inspire people that I come in and people come in and talk to me and they feel better. And then um, I've been called a muse uh, in the music scene and, and they said, that's what you're here to do. And he leaned over across the bar and he tapped me on the forehead. And I thought, what is this crazy person talking about? And I picked up my yoga mat and I walked out. And as I was walking out, he gave me his card and his card said quantum healing. And I had no idea. I started, I tried to Google it and, and no, there was no explanation. I couldn't find quantum healing, but I couldn't stop thinking about what is, is this? What kind of people inspire people? What kind of people um, do this kind of just talk to people? So I Googled people who talk to people and, the, and coaching came up, life coach. And two weeks later, I was in California for my first certification class. And then later that year, I took another certification class with a different um, organization. And uh, so basically like about, Three months later, I had my first session. Um, and that's where it started. And then people were asking me, they said, when you talk and you move your hands, and I was seeing people, clients in person, right? When you move your hands, I feel something. I get tingles. Like, what is it that you do with your hands? Like, what? I have no idea about energy, nothing, zero. But that stuck in my mind too. So I was researching all that. And that, that's how I started it just slowly. When I moved to Sedona, I was still coaching. I still had no idea about energy work. I still had no idea about remote energy work, let alone, you know, that you can reach someone all the way across the world um, with your energy. So it developed from scratch. That was a long story, but yeah, it was yeah, fun. No, I love that. It's so interesting to like, you know, meet people with the kind of abilities that you have and then say like, well, how did you get there? You know? Um, so I'm, I'm curious, like what kind of clients did you first start taking on when you were a coach? I did not have these abilities when I started as a coach, or at least I had no awareness of having the abilities and it took really intense meditations that I started doing that I learned to actually, I was shaking the bars of my cage. I wanted to see like how far I can go um, and what I can develop. And it just kept happening as I uh, had my practice deepen and, and, um, I did more and more of the spiritual practice. The first year, I pretty much meditated the entire year, probably. <laughs> when I came to Sedona, that's all I did. Um, in 2012, I just meditated the entire year. Um, but the first... So when we were in the certification class, they said you have to set the date of when you're going to start. And it has to be at least no more than 60 days from the, from this moment, because if more than 60 days goes by, the project is dead. Um, and I said, no, I got to make me the overachiever back in the financial services. I'm, I'm like, it's going to be 30 days. I'm going to see my client. I remember very well. I, I said, I'm going to see my first client June 1st. So I made a website and I started and I posted about that on, on uh, Facebook. And then I got terrified. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so scared. What's going to happen? And I'm just sitting there and I didn't do anything else. I'm like, please, please, please don't call me. And all of a sudden, <laughs> June 6, someone emailed me and said, I would like a session. What? 
<laughs> out of nowhere, like that. And I met up with this girl and she was having rashes all over, uh, like the nervous, the, like the rashes from the nerves. I didn't even know anything about it, but now I know that that was her response. And all we did, we, I, I used to see people in coffee houses. And then I started renting a little office with a couch. Um, but we, me and her, she was my first client. Me and her, we sat down and we just talked. And she was saying how she was having difficulties with her family, what her family wanted her to do versus what she wanted to do. Kind of ties into our subject today. Um, and all we did was meet once a week and talk. And her rashes went away. And she started painting. And she left that whole business that her parents wanted her to be a part of. And she started her whole new reality. And that was my first client. So, yeah, it was beautiful just to see her transformation. And I'm like, wow, I actually, you know, something is happening. I can do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can do this and you do an amazing job. Um, I wonder, could you explain like, Okay, so that particular client, and I see this in my own practice, is like, they're just taking on what others want them to do, and their yeah. body is having like a high level of rejection, yeah. and then they're feeling drained because they're not able to articulate, hey, like, I don't want to do this, and yeah. then also there's like a core issue there, so could you walk us through the mechanism of how like other people's projections get in, attacks our core, and then what we can do about it? All right, so it's we're, we're stepping. We're, we're now starting with the boundaries here. So she, because her, she had an over um, possessive or over controlling family, father specifically, and the entire family did what he wanted because it's my way or the highway. So since, since she was a child, she did not have like she had her boundaries just plowed off by that kind of environment and she learned that it was easier to say yes 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 and and not argue uh, than to be herself she wanted to be an artist she had she had artistic talents from day one uh but she said that the family was like no you're not doing this you are uh working and and they had some i don't remember like something had to do with like car wash or some ridiculous stuff and she was like i don't do this at all and, but she had no say they they got her an apartment in new york and they said you're going to live here you're going to pay it off by uh, working at this place and you're not painting uh, and she was having hives from the nerves you know from like the result like that um so in in this particular case same as with most of the cases where people have a hard time building their boundaries or expressing their boundaries or even remembering what it is that they want in many cases. Um, it happens when the core issue is that they, they had an over controlling parents that did not respect their boundaries and um, the situation in the family was my way or the highway. And the coping mechanism here, the coping mechanism is to become i call it the yes person right the people pleaser um when they grow up and go into the world they become people pleasers because they want to get so approval only comes in that kind of family approval approval only comes when um you do what the parents say and if you open your mouth if you argue if you even express that you don't like it um, the repercussions are so intense that people do that less and less and less, and it's easier to just hide the entire inner space. But then when we grow up, when we leave that environment, we continue that as that becomes a habitual behavior. And the love imprint there is that you only get positive attention. You only get loved if you say yes to whatever that other party wants you to do. And so this is where the challenge, one of the roots of the uh, situation when the person has a hard time 
expressing what they want, even if they know what they want. But in, in a lot of cases, they completely lose touch or lose the memory of what they actually uh, preferred over what the parents preferred. And so now, nowadays, I very often have to walk people backwards and like, let's find that what it is that is true, you're truly here for what your preference was before the, the whole parenting happened. Um, but unfortunately, it's not, it's not just, we can't really blame the parents because they were treated the same way. Most, in most cases, it's a generational condition and it's a generational trauma. So it's absorbed from the previous generation into the next one, into the next one, and passed on from one generation to the next. And so all we can do is see what it is within ourselves and stop, become in charge of our own experience versus uh, you know, turning around and blaming the parents and stuff. Because the parents, they just... They just most likely repeated what was familiar to them. Yeah, yeah. So it's generational and we get to be the breakers of that generational yeah. pattern. Okay, great. So yeah, thanks for explaining that and um, how it relates to those like boundaries that we get to create. And so as I move through my life, I realize like whenever I'm getting triggered, I'm like, oh gosh, like I know this too well. I know that it's me. Yeah. <laughs> And that it's something that I need to heal. And so, um, you know, like in the workplace, like what I used to realize, like why I wanted to work for myself is that like, I get triggered by everyone around me <laughs> uh, because, you know, like this person maybe reminds me of my mom or my dad, and I maybe haven't reconciled my experiences with my parents yet. Um, so for anyone out there who is experiencing that, where they're at work and they're getting triggered by their coworkers and triggered by their boss, What's, um, what's something that you can share that would help them move through that? Well, first of all, it's recognizing that it's not out there. It's not them. Because as you just mentioned, from your own experience, my experience, and, and a lot of people's experience, it doesn't matter how many times you change jobs. It doesn't matter how many times you move. It doesn't matter how many times you switch friends or boyfriends or whatever. It just keeps happening, right? <laughs> like there is a little period of like, oh, it's okay. This is so much better. And then boom, it's all happening all over again. Simply because there is an energetic match. Energetic match is created by the trauma that is unprocessed and unhealed. Plus the... Uh, that habitual behavior. So a lot of people develop the state of a victim, which is an emotional addiction, by the way. So you would feel victimized and you're so used to feeling victimized that you're going to kind of, you're going to attract the kind of people that would victimize you and say, oh, the same situation keeps repeating over and over. So Another aspect here to look at is victim versus victimizer. Um, majority of people don't have awareness of how that mechanism works because no one teaches this. So once you've become aware that something is repeating and repeating and the same situation with a whole different set of people is happening, I would suggest that it's an, the most important thing is here to sit down and first tune into the feeling that you are having. What feeling are you experiencing? What kind of emotion are you experiencing when this kind of situation is at hand? And it keeps repeating. Oh, and when did you experience that before? And when did you experience that last? And then you, you keep tracing that back you would notice that oh my god it traces all the way back to uh my parents let's say my mom or my dad or my older brother or uh, you know someone who had the authority over you this is especially strong with people who uh not only their boundaries were plowed the way by overpowering parents or and also those who are abused because you're um 
you experience complete sense of helplessness, right? So that's the victim comes in and the state of helplessness comes in. And it's such a strong imprint on the psyche is that we come out into the world and we keep attracting the same stuff because the matching mechanism with your boss, with your friends, with your, the matching mechanism is completely neutral. All that's happening is reality is matching your trauma internally. And so for that to stop happening, we have to trace the trauma, recognize there is a pattern. What kind of feeling we're having? What, it, what does it remind us of? And is it true at the present moment? Most of the time, the discomfort that, that we experience and what we experience in this situation has to do with feeling not good enough not good enough and guilty for not being good enough because you were never good enough for your parents. So you were never good enough for whomever. And so you became the yes person. Um, and now the boss is doing the same thing. And you experience in this whole soup of emotion that is not, is so intense, not because it's just this one occurrence, but, but because you relive in all of these previous occurrences in that instance too. So that was a long answer to the question as in you, you tune into what you're feeling and you recognize where it's coming from. And then you seek, because emotion tells us what kind of, um, where it came from. You can trace emotion, you can trace the feeling into emotion from emotion into the state of mind. And then as you discover what's behind all that, then you're able to sit down and say, is this true in the present moment and work backwards from that? Is it true that I'm not good enough for my boss? Is it true that I'm not good enough for my friends? Is it true that what they're blaming me for is accurate? Is it accurate that I am guilty of something that is being said right there? So just becoming aware of things and then working backwards to the present moment. That's a good process to go through. Yeah. And I'm just like thinking about the compounding effect of all of, you know, all of the times in my life where I felt like, Oh, I'm not good enough. Or I'm, I think the last thing that I really focused on was unloved and yeah. everything in my entire reality reflected that back onto me. And so it's like the subconscious will bring that up until it's like so uncomfortable because yeah compounding effect so how um how best might someone move through that like just like the the feelings and 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 um like the conscious awareness of wow I'm feeling like I'm unloved I'm seeing this as a pattern do you have any tips on how somebody could best move through that well something that I kind of just covered so first just becoming aware of that it's not happening to you it's it's because it's happening because there is this just becoming aware of that situation makes the whole situation the of the previous situations and conditioning makes the whole situation way easier to handle You're like oh that's me actually that is has something to do with me and then also seeking the whole victim thing right do i need this in some way how does it serve me to disempower myself by continuing giving the power to that other party uh, which makes me a victim and makes them uh, stronger than me in some way so I'm giving away my power a lot of people do that because they're terrified of their power they're terrified of their power because they were brought to be um, voiceless uh, brought up to be voiceless by that kind of environment that we're talking about in the family. Um, so checking these things. And for me, meditation has worked. Dropping really deep in meditation where you can actually see the entire landscape of that emotional um, space, let's just say, right? From the very beginning, oh, my, my, let's just say my dad always guilted me. No matter what I did, I was never good enough. It was never uh, up to his standards. The standards were this and that. And, and 
how do they cope with it? Oh, I want hiding, or I um, develop that idea that no matter what, like I'm never good enough. And so it puts you into that victim. So you can really trace your own inner state of being in meditation. And then when you come out of me, so you have the whole picture, it, it's not going to startle you anymore. And it's not going to seem like, oh, these people are after me or they're at me and they're on my case. Oh my God, you know, why, why all these situations keep repeating? You're going to get out of that space. That's good because you've just analyzed the whole thing. But then you literally in the present moment of today, after you've observed all that, you need to choose how you prefer to act and respond in these kind of situations. They are going to be showing up at the beginning of this process. But as you continue correcting your self-correcting, um, correcting your responses, continue correcting your behavior and mainly your emotional response to the whole thing, they're going to start happening less and less and less. And one day you're going to wake up and not even remember that that was a part of your reality. And I'm speaking from my own experience because I was 100% uh, there. I was a people's pleaser to the team. My mom was overbearing. She was always my way or the highway. And my father guilted me for just being on this planet. So, so I had to overcome a lot of that. That was in my relationships. That was in my work. That was everywhere until I became aware of that. And then you teach yourself how to speak, how to bring the your how to bring your response without getting charged. The main idea is to drop that emotional charge. Like, oh my God, they're doing this to me, right? <laughs> like, oh my God, why is this happening again? Oh my God, this person is all of that. You know, like you, you move past that by knowing that, oh, it's just that neutral match environment, like the energetic match to me having an opening there still, right? How would I like to answer them? And it's terrifying. The first time you want to set boundary, you want to say something, you're terrified because, oh my God, what if they flip out at you? What if, oh, what if they never talk to you again, right? Or, oh, what if I'm not going to be loved if I say what my, my preference is? So this is what you come in um, with courage. And you just start practicing and practicing and practicing. And the idea is to stop looking at the other person as a victimizer. They're not coming to get you. Um, you can speak your mind and your delivery will determine their response. All right. I would not recommend calling them out on this because most people will have no idea. Most people are on autopilot, which means that... Um, conditioned behavior, the practice behavior we just talked about, right? So if you call them out, oh, you're doing this to me, or oh, you're a victim, they are a victimizer, and uh, there's blame, and it's all like unpleasant situations. So just let them be them, let them do them, and you do you. And you just teach yourself how to know what you want, what you don't want, and how to speak about it in a calm way without getting emotionally charged. And the more you do it, the less you'll get emotionally charged because you realize that it's a completely neutral match to the inner state of being. Yeah, that's beautiful. I think the most empowering thing that you ever said to me was that pe people in our lives are just neutral, you know, props. <laughs> And I thought about that. And like today when I get triggered, I'm like, oh, wow, like this person, they're like not out to get me. They're just like they're having their own experience and like, you know, inviting me to do something or feel a certain way. And like I get to, you know, be empowered and saying like, that's not the narrative I want to be a part of. And um, I know for me, like 
canned statements <laughs> are yeah. really helpful. You know, just like having things to say, like you were saying, you know, practicing and really focusing in on what you want. Um, and, and so with that, I'm, I'm curious, like, so we've got like, you know, the core and how boundaries come from, you know, childhood programming and, and like moving out into that, like, let's say I have had um, so many repeated experiences that like, I, I drop down into a state of like anxiety and depression. Do you have any like special hacks on how to like come up outside of anxiety? Like, you know, we create the energetic boundaries um, and then, you know, we're on an upward spiral. Do you have some, some tips on that? Yeah, I always, I always go back to clearing your field. So you have more energy within your, your own more energy available to you, meditation, and also clearing your energy field every day. So you start every day as a clean slate. So you patched all the holes around you energetically, and you um, meditated, you found that core, you observed your uh, reality, you've observed this situation that might be bugging you too. And then in meditation, it's a great way to practice how you would like to respond. And when you practice in meditation, it goes right into you kind of reprogramming yourself. So when when reality, uh, the physical reality is there, it's easier to do these things. I'll give you an example. I literally just it just happened, and um, there was someone who is my client but she kept asking me on a personal dinner can we please go on a personal dinner and um i've observed that every time she had a personal conversation with me before she would try to turn it into a session kind of you know for free so uh, <laughs> this is very common and very typical kind of behavior people want to pull you into like in a social setting but then they want to discuss things that uh, normally are done in the session and uh I had, a, I had, a, I already had the whole week of sessions and I told her straight out, I said, look, I would love to um, go to dinner with you as long as it's not going to turn into a session. And there was this pause, like, and then she goes, wow, what an incredible um, example of practice and boundaries. <laughs> and that's it. I was like, yeah, high five to me um, <laughs> because I wasn't sure how she was going to respond, but she just say that. And, and then when we went for dinner, she literally held it and I, and I, um, held it like the conversation was everything except that I said, this is my, my personal time. And, uh, I already had a whole week of sessions. And so right now I'm not interested in having another one. If you want to have a personal experience with me, let's do that. And she held it together the entire dinner and we had a great time. And I thanked her on the way out. I said, I appreciate that you respected my request. And she said, it was so clear. There was no way that I would not have respected it. And so when you are able to, I did not get charged. I did not get freaked out about her pressure me for dinner. I did not get, um, I just told her as my truth was. And we are so scared nervous that oh if we tell our truth if we tell our preferences we're not going to people will reject us but the people that you want to have around would actually respect when you do something like that if you do it in a calm relaxed matter of fact kind of manner without like ah, you're getting in my you are like in my field you know like because that's that's energetic and people feel it and so if you do that they they go to move in even stronger and so there's like a whole very different energetic dynamic but if you calmly just say sure i would love to do this or that as long as um we respect my request right there that's yeah. it and it's, and it's so clear yeah yeah. yeah. So you speak with kindness. You you speak without creating a sense of conflict, right? 
it's not the they're not the aggressor you're not trying you're not running you're not shrinking you're not contracting there you just say hey you know what sure i love you i would love to do this but this week doesn't work or uh yeah this is great but you know what here's this one thing and uh how about it and if a person if a person if it doesn't work for the person you know when you deliver it in this way there's no room for them to get upset at you because you hold your own. You're literally calm as a Hindu cow, <laughs> as they say, <laughs> and you just speak your preferences. And people respect that. And people follow if uh, these are the right people in your life. But in my, in my experience, it just it's all the people in my life nowadays yeah because you consistently created that boundary yeah. and i feel like i can feel people's boundaries you know like i know like oh i can just tell that person wouldn't want me to do that like you just kind of know um because the, it's just energetically there. I'm also really sensitive to energy. And I was like, I was so thrilled when I talked to you into dinner. And I think I just sat there and channeled information and kind of felt a little crazy. I'm like, why am I saying all these things? Um, oh, that was wonderful. It was a lot of fun. It was wonderful to see how your mind works. And, and for me, it was fascinating by all of the information that was coming through. Like, whoa, look at that. <laughs> it was incredible. Yeah, but it's important when you are meeting new people or when you're creating romantic relationships, when they're new, right at the very beginning, it's important to express your boundaries. I'm looking at 111. This is right on the point. Right there. <laughs> um, it's important to set the boundaries at the very beginning. Because if you're going to play, and a lot of women do this because they want the man so bad. Oh my God, if I express my, express my uh, true preferences, they're not going to be with me. They're not going to love me. They're going to walk away. Like, so I'm going to say yes to everything the guy says, right? But they will respect you more and your relationship will be way more balanced for you and the person if you are able to avoid doing that, avoid being the yes girl and just calmly in this way express your preferences let's do this yeah you know what no <laughs> uh okay so because people majority of people are on autopilot like i said autopilot meaning if it happened once and it worked if it happened twice and it worked it's a habit emotional habit like repeating and repeating so if you said yes 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 through the first two weeks of, of your relationship or friendship or uh, workplace or anyway especially in romantic relationships that's how it's going to be and then you're going to wake up from you a few years later oh, it's all about him yeah but you are the one who agreed to it from the very beginning and if you start expressing your boundaries or your preferences at that point your partner, your boss, your friends are going to be very surprised. They're like, oh my God, you changed. Something's <laughs> wrong with you. What, like, what happened to that yes person that I know or that I think that I know, right? Because at the very beginning of all connections is when we establish those emotional uh, contracts, right? How we're going to interact with each other and then people know uh, where your boundaries are from the very beginning if you show them where your boundaries are from the very beginning again in a very relaxed calm emotionless way this works this doesn't hmm? yeah and then it's not like I just I feel like in my experience like if I don't establish a boundary I have that little feeling right here of like oh I really should have done that and then that feeling really drives me to kind of establish the boundary and maybe I'm not so gracious way <laughs> yes so that that already is when you have to like blow up and and state your case and there is a there is a conflict already right because the other person is startled they're like what i had no idea because you never said 
You always said, yes, yes, yes. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. But you don't. And then when you say, oh, actually, I never liked it. They're like, what? You know? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> that. And then also, um, ah, I just lost my train of thought. Anyway. Oh, we're talking but, about boundaries and kind of unloading on people. I feel like that's my case if I am not really like consciously aware of and putting a lot of effort into the boundaries that I'm establishing with people that um, that little build up, you know, like in my yeah. last, like one of my last relationships, it was like, I don't like going out to um, eat at certain places, you know, and it's like, if you say, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. And then all of a sudden this little resentment builds and you're just like, I hate, I hate that place. Why do you invite <laughs> me? You know, and, and, then it becomes, and, they, and they would think there. that you, you're having a bad day or like something's wrong with you. But the truth is, if you don't show yourself, they're going to build a relationship with someone that you're showing. If you're showing the yes girl, you know, the people pleaser, they always agree to everything in any relationship, friendship, you know, like I said, romantic at work. If you're showing that because you think that you'll be accepted more, that's what they're going to interact with. And I'm going to be startled when you express the truth. And a lot of people have to, a lot of people either run, you know, because they can't speak up and they're like, I can't take this any longer. So I have to move or I have to change jobs. Or I have to get away from these friends. But running doesn't help. Like we said at the beginning, right? Because if you do the same thing in a different set of circumstances or different place, it's just going to be exactly the same outcome after a short period of time. Yeah, so, there's yeah. This, uh, there's this saying, wherever you go, there you're at. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So we're uh, we're right at uh, one fifteen, and um, I know that everybody's been patiently awaiting with their questions. So um, for the last fifteen minutes of today, we're going to open it up and allow um, you guys to ask questions. Um, so anything you know relating to Isabella's uh, story and her path, and um, or creating boundaries. So who wants to go first? I'd say just keep talking. Isabella, it's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so Isabella, um, can you tell us a little bit more about the work that you're currently doing? I introduced you and your history. So you've gone from coach to metaphysical specialist and the work you do really transcends the 3D. So could you tell us a little bit about that in your sessions? Ooh, the sessions... <sighs> The sessions grew into something super complex and involved and detailed. And it's literally every little piece just added year after year, client after client through clients asking, oh, can you do this? I don't know. Let's try. Can you do that? Well, I don't know. Let's find out. And so now the sessions are half a day long <laughs> um, with a break in the middle and we can go really, really far into the non-physical space, the whole um, cosmic reality, the higher mind, I channel uh, the higher essences for the people I uh, create or bring energies of activation. We stimulate DNA upgrades, we stimulate um, the upgrades in people's lives altogether. Um, a lot of people end up getting something that they've wanted for so long, but they couldn't be, get there because there were blocks. And so I do energetic clearing. And then we also work with patterns. Like, let's say if someone says, oh, my pattern keeps repeating. I keep doing this and I don't know why. Like, oh, I never have money. I don't know why. Oh, I never have, I can never sustain a relationship and I don't know why. And so, for example, these are the most common ones, but people re say that, oh, there's this thing that keeps repeating and I've developed an exercise that helps us find the root of that. And so the same kind of um, process that we looked at things and how that root was created. There's an aha moment. And I offer practices of how to move past it and, 
And people who follow the practices, they just say, wow, my whole reality is different. Sometimes reality is different just from taking a session. Sometimes it takes a little longer for the people to um, get there. And I think it depends on each individual's journey, like your path is determined or it determines how fast or slow you're going to go if you're a new soul you know, you're probably going to take longer if you're an old soul, been there, done that, and had the gazillion incarnations already. And so the incarnations is something we'll look at. I read Akashic Records. Um, so it's a very, it depends on what you like. If you want just the energetic adjustment and um, down-to-earth stuff, like patterns and, and blockages and physical conditions. Why do I have this physical condition? Oh, here's your emotional cause. I can find that for you. Um, if you want just that, that's called the quantum healing. But if you want the whole shebang with channeling and the cosmic stuff and the past lives and um, activating energy, plus what I just said, uh, plus the down to earth part, that's uh, the whole full session medley with the quantum healing session and it's exciting it's very involved it's very detailed i um do my best to deliver as much as i can in one session in one sitting and i've been experiencing people have been experiencing a lot of transformations things that i hear back uh, just quite frankly above my own <laughs> mine like how well you know i just show up and do the session <laughs> and you and you deal with the miracles yes. oh, like how did that happen i have no idea <laughs> can you explain how that worked out no i cannot i just i just bring in the energy and i do my thing i bring my skills and there we go i well, think we we'll have someone thing. wants to ask a question yeah it looks like mccray do you want to unmute yourself and ask a question yeah i was trying to think of one because i know that after you talk um, it's nice to have questions. Um, it feels good when people have questions whenever I'm speaking um, in recovery. Um, all of that makes sense. I, I definitely um, am someone who was taught to say yes all the time. And I seem to keep doing the same thing at my job in situations where I'm like, yes, with all my coworkers. Yeah. Um, and so I have two questions. My first question is what tools, what is a good tool to use to learn to start, stop always saying yes? And then um, a second question would be, um, what do you do when other, when you're also noticing that you're attracting all these other people with no boundaries? Like, for example, I'm in recovery and I, I have really high boundaries about my um, usage of drugs and alcohol, but I seem to keep track, attracting people who don't have those same boundaries. Um, but so how do I lovingly teach them? So I'm doing it and then I'm attracting it and it's. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's still a match because you, we only are able to experience reality that matches where we are at ourselves. I know I went through drugs and alcohol and, and uh, recovered on my own because I decided that I was no longer going to, that I, that I didn't wanna do it anymore, that's it. And it was, it was around 2010 when I made that, it just kind of fell off because other things started coming in. Uh, but I was super heavy as being in the music industry. I mean, that was the lifestyle and yeah, 24 hour party people. That was me. So for sure for years, for like 15 years, maybe. So um, the tools to start teaching yourself, I kind of went over that at the beginning there. Um, first of all, observe the feeling that you're experiencing and trace it back to see where it started and so that you will recognize that that's not the situation that's personal you're just being a match to learned behavior what the parents did to you what your coping mechanism was your coping mechanism with your previous environment was to be the yes person 
the reason you still bring in the yes people or the people with no boundaries into your reality is because you're still not quite there yourself and so they're just being a mirror to you so and then start practicing first of all you you observe where it came from and you um, learn that it's it's neutral it's just because you were conditioned that way and by the way a lot of us people pleasers we had to go into drug and alcohol because it's uh, it's unbearable you can deal how who can deal with being a yes person 24 7 to everything that comes your way it's terrible so that's the space where you hide you just get away from everything or decompress or whatever or just like oh my god now i don't feel it any of this anymore so a lot of people go into into that as an escape as a coping mechanism the coping mechanism was that you hide yourself and it's the same exact coping mechanism in drugs and alcohol you completely hide yourself in uh, drugs and alcohol so first see where that pattern came from and then start gently practicing without getting emotionally charged practice like in little portions oh what if i actually say what works for me right now or what if i actually say what doesn't work for me right now and observe observe the guilt because a lot of us feel guilty to say what we prefer because we were raised to do that to be that person that it was guilted for expressing what we prefer but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to work with yourself in little portions like oh, what if i oh this so does not work for me and you'll say honey i love you you have to start from the very very uh caring and loving place so it doesn't go into conflict but you truly care love that person or you truly care about that person but you also care about yourself i really I hear you. I hear your state of being, but it just does not work for me right now. Not today. Or, oh, I love you so much. I would absolutely want to join you in this, but, you know, it's not really uh, something that works for me anymore. So you start practicing and you will see that with every time you practiced, and the way the person responded, and they can respond like, well, whatever. But if you deliver it in the love and caring way, there's no room for that whatever answer, right? So you will observe that the more you practice, every little time that it works turns into like a feeling of success. Like, wow, I, wow, it worked. Oh, Let's do that next time again. Wow, it worked again. That worked again. And then it becomes your reality. When it, once it became your reality, you're going to attract less and less of people that are mirroring you and more and more people with whom you can actually be yourself and they're being themselves with you as well. Does that answer your question? Yes, it do, absolutely does. Yeah. And now I see all the people involved. It's all my, I get we're in the beginning where it's like, it, it's from my parents. I already know where it comes from. And, and now I, and I've, I've done a lot of work with where that comes from an alcoholic father and learning to say yes, because I was afraid of them. Yeah. And, um, but what I'm hearing in this, this whole conversation is that there's also a lot of people around me that are yes people. And so I have to cycle through the information because I'm taking advice from other yes people. And then I have the no people. <laughs> and what you're saying is just go do what my heart is saying and my gut is saying, but do it in a loving way. Yeah. yeah. Protected myself and have a boundary, but love that person, but be like, this yeah. is me though. This, this is what yeah. I can provide. That's exactly what you just, you just had a rehearsal of that. <laughs> uh, you can you can hug that person and be like oh honey i care so much about your situation but 
whatever like but it really is not something that i can deal with today or i have so much going on or whatever you know you just you explain to them that it's not something that you're going to be involved in and by the way your father being an alcoholic he probably had to deal with something similar from his parents too you know because the uh, people who become alcoholics there is guilt there is lack of connection there and there is also that whole thing of having to hide you have to hide yourself you have to escape into something so they start drinking and they and they uh, stay in that space so having compassion for that too you know the whole thing about having compassion compassion for uh, the father who didn't know better and he was dealing with his own thing. That's why he became an alcoholic. And whatever his behavior was, that was his trauma speaking. The anger, that's incredible pain. The whatever abuse, that's he's repeating something that happened to him as a child. All of that. So finding that compassion for um, your parents, for the ones who be- made you this way, um, because they didn't know any better. And then also for... Uh, the ones who are around you who want to continue because they don't know any better. Like I said earlier, it's it's an autopilot, it's practice behavior. You're not in charge, in charge of what other people do. So going and saying, stop doing that, that bothers me, that doesn't go anywhere except creating a conflict. You take charge of your own end of that interaction and say, I have so much love for you. I have so much compassion for you. I know where you're coming from, but this doesn't work for me. Yes, that's so beautiful. This doesn't work for me because, you know, we matter most in our own life. And that's something that um, spirit has shown me, like in my last little experience of moving to Sedona, I'm like, hey, can I get I was like, can I just please get the lesson without the social alchemy? Because, you know, (laughs) you know, it gets uncomfortable. Um, And so spirit was like, well, what's the golden thread between you and, uh, you know, all the clients that you're working with right now? And what came up was putting yourself first. And that's kind of something that I've had to like reprogram into, you know, you matter most and, and creating those boundaries and being able to speak into that, I think is so important. So thank you so much, Isabella, because, you know, I think we started working together three years ago and my trajectory just has been so amazing. There's so much miracles and abundance and blessings from, you know, the work that we've done together. And so, yeah. I'm so grateful that message that you send me when you, when the words that were in our exercise came up inspired and oh passionate creative and and inspired i think inspired yeah yeah that blew my mind and that took what two years probably since we did that exercise right and then all of a sudden you wrote to me and said look 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 like i got the same exact words and state of being but for me i have observed your transformation uh, and it's it's miraculous and for me to have had a hand in that or to have assisted you, it really is an honor because you have a lot to offer this world. And thank you for all the work that you do and for who you are and for who you are yet to be, which is <laughs> visible to me. But you'll get there. You'll see. You'll see soon enough. So just just so beautiful. Yeah. And about put, put yourself first, but still have space to have compassion for others. That's the whole, the whole thing right now. You know, the, you arrive at the space where you can have compassion and kindness towards those who are not on the same page as you without getting emotionally charged, without judgment, and just receive them where they're at with love, with care, and with boundaries. And I think that's a true mastery. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today and for tuning in and for your questions, McCray. That was so great. And Isabella, thank you so much. Um, Where can people find you? Isabellagreen.com. Not very creative, just my name. Um, What's your YouTube channel? 
it's the same thing isabella green made it very simple so that people can just put it on google and, and it will come right up isabella green youtube and i i cover a lot of subjects on my youtube channel um, you can learn about my work on the YouTube channel. You can listen to channeling messages on the YouTube channel. And also I cover a lot of these kind of subjects on my YouTube. So if you are drawn to my offerings, go ahead and listen to um, what I have to offer there. Or feel free to send me a session request form through my website, isabellagreen.com, and I'll be there and we can work one-on-one. -on -one and I'll offer you all that I have. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you so much, Isabella. Thank you, truly my pleasure. Bye guys. Bye.